Hi there, and welcome to another interview. Today, I've got the fabulous Roddy with me, and I'm going to ask Roddy the same question I ask absolutely everybody. Hey, Roddy, why did you become carnivore? Hi, Stephen. Um, carnivore is something I found after being five years on the keto way of eating. Uh, they, I found that on 2017. I was type 2 diabetic. I had non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, stage 3 kidney disease, diabetic neuropathy, and my, my lower legs and feet. Um, well, I had high cholesterol. Triglycerides were very high. Just about everything that, you, that could go wrong metabolically. You know, that that, that, that just um, summed me up. And uh, in 2017, my wife came to me and said, I think I've found a way for you to reverse the diabetes, but you might not like it. And I said, well, why, why would I not like it? And she says, it means you have to give up that last slice of bread. And for a year before that, I was doing my own version of low carbon. I had cut my bread and take all the way down to one slice of bread a day. And I have to say, and that year from 2016, November 2016, to November 2017, it was a year of starvation. You know, my wife would be preparing a meal in the evening and I would be walking up and down the walking up and down the kitchen like a caged lion. You know, I was ravenous. And uh, I would have my wee boiled egg and two slices or one slice of bread I'd cut down to one slice of bread and I thought I was doing well potatoes I had stopped them so I you know so that was that first year of low carb so it was and as I said in 2017 my wife done all the research and she came to me and says I think I found a way for you to reverse the diabetes but you might not like it because you have to give up the, bre the bread completely and I remember saying there if I do that I will starve with hunger and she laughed at me. She says, no, you won't. She says, there are others that are actually at this. She says, and they're getting great results. And uh, so I started to look into it. And uh, one of the the videos I came across on YouTube was, yes, Dr. Ken Berry uh, on how to reverse type 2 diabetes. And uh, and uh, I remember him saying that um, medications... The diabetic medications do not prevent diabetic complications. That right away struck home in me because I had loved that. I knew that, that that was true. And then there was Dr. Sarah Holbark, who's no longer with us. She had a great um, a TED talk on how to reverse it. That just blew my mind. So what did you know? And I went to my doctor, I told my doctor what I was going to do. I don't think I was there to ask him if I could do it. I was there to let him know that I was going to do it because for 10 years, I had suffered with diabetes for 10 years. I had taken the medications, I had followed their advice on the dietary guidelines and everything else, yet I was continually getting worse. I wasn't getting any better, I was getting worse. And my wife was watching this, you know. And if anybody ever had neuropathy, and their lower legs and feet, they'll know how they'll they'll know what I'm saying, whatever I say is horrendous. And I think it's the start of the journey to losing your toes or losing your legs. And um whenever I discovered that there was a possibility that I could reverse this, I wasn't going to my doctor to ask him for permission. I was going to serve him notice that I was going to do this. But thankfully, he turned around and he said to me, well, look, if you're going to do this, I'm going to have to adjust your meds. And this was uh, November 2017. He adjusted the meds. Um, that Christmas was my first Christmas on the keto diet. There was no treats. There was no sugar. There was no chocolate. There was no desserts. You know, it, it, it seemed like a very gloomy Christmas. So it did. But whenever we get into the new year, all of a sudden I started to feel better. Energy started to return. I was sitting one night in the living room watching the TV and I started doing this with my thumb. And I looked over and I says to my wife, I says, look at this. 
And she looked back at me. She says, I'm telling you, she says, you keep doing what you're doing. She says, it's getting rid of the bread. It's getting rid of the carbs. The arthritis in my thumb, the pain was beginning to subside for the first time in years. So it was, you know. So uh, I, that was good enough for me. I thought, right, I'm going to stay keto. I'm going to keep on a keto. By March 2018, four months out of keto, I went back to my doctor to get my blood results. And he was literally dancing around his office with sheer delight. He says, Ronnie, he says, what you have done, he says, is incredible. And I says, right. He says, let me start with the diabetes. He says, you're no longer in the, in the diabetic range. Fatty liver disease, he says, is gone. Your kidney function is good. I went over a whole host of things. Triglycerides are down. Cholesterol is down. Um, uh, he took me totally by surprise. I'm... I think five foot eight inches tall. Whenever I left his office that day, I think it was about 12 feet tall, you know. And uh, I continued on from there. So I had keto, very strict keto for five years. But over the past couple of years, Carnivore has been something I've been looking into, you know, because all my old influencers like Kay and Barry and that have all been doing that road, you know. And I like the idea of it. And I've watched a lot of podcasts, a lot of people getting great results from autoimmune diseases, including in your channel. I've watched your channel, uh, Dave Mack. Um, who else? Steak and Butter Gear, I've watched her as well. Um, Anthony Chafee. You know, and I thought to myself, these people can't all be wrong. You know, they can't all be wrong. Like, you know, these are people who have had serious autoimmune diseases. They're, they they start to eat nothing but meat. And within weeks, months, they're feeling better. And their symptoms have got less. And in some cases, their symptoms have gone completely. And I thought, I have to look at this. Because after five years on keto, and here's the very strange thing about it, I play the guitar. And during the years of my diabetes, I hadn't give up teaching the guitar. I could no longer play it. And um, 18 months at the keto, I was able to go back to the guitar. But this is the hand, the left hand that I use for playing chords and things up the fretboard. But I can finger pick, as you can see. You can see my nails here, like I've got sort of long nails for a man to finger pick the guitar. Um, this hand here, although I could finger pick, I seemed to have a touch of arthritis in this thumb here. It was as if the worst of the arthritis jumped out of this thumb and went over to that thumb whenever it was on keto. And a few times on keto, when I ate less veg uh, vegetables, I remember one night having a meal and there was no vegetables on the plate except for lettuce. And later on that evening, this felt better. You know, and that sort of stuck with me, less vegetables, and that seems to get better. So that had the whole notion in my head of going care of her. Uh, this lingering bit of arthritis that was left on my right thumb, or had jumped from my left thumb over to my right thumb, whatever, I thought, I'll try the care of her diet to see what happens. So at the end of 2022, I started to reduce my vegetables. I didn't go sliding into the carnivore overnight. I didn't flip at the end overnight. Started about the end of uh, November, 2022, I had reduced the vegetables away, way down until I was taking literally nothing, only something, maybe a small amount of onion and a small amount of mushroom. But by January the 7th, 2023, full carnivore. I went full carnivore. Um, I didn't, funny enough, have too bad of a reaction um, with my digestion with issues that a lot of people get, probably because I wore into it very, very easily and the fact that I was on a keto diet for five years. I wasn't coming from a standard Western sort of diet. I was coming from a keto diet, which wasn't too bad. And um, I've been carnivore ever since. This, all arthritis is gone now. 
completely. Fibromyalgia has gone um, asleep better. The thing to like about carnivore is the kitchen doesn't get steamed up anymore with vegetables when you're boiling vegetables and things like this. We've got these two air fryers, and I have to tell you, ribeye steak is beautiful coming out of them air fryers, just 12 minutes, and it's absolutely delicious, so it is. And eggs. And I, some people, if you were to ask them what they had to eat last Thursday, they wouldn't be able to tell you. I can't tell you. It was ribeye steak and eggs, probably four or five eggs, fried eggs, um, small amount of butter, and plenty of Redmond's real salt. Uh, and and that's me. Made. I can live on one meal a day very, very easily now. If I do eat two meals a day, it's something like two boiled eggs in the morning time with a coffee, black coffee. And uh, I have my meal at three o'clock, that me and one big meal at three o'clock, and nothing the rest of the evening, only water or something to drink, you know. But that's it. Now, you want to go back to my diabetes years, that would scare you like the way I ate. I had to love it. There was a the electric went off here one day and I, and I nearly had a heart attack. I have to eat. If I don't eat, I can go with the hypos. You know, because I was on the medications at that time. I was in the middle of the worst of the diabetes. And um, I actually spent a lot, say £600, I think it was, on taking out my electric hogs and putting in gas hogs just to make sure that if the electric ever goes off again, I'll still be able to eat you know, that's how crazy it was. You had to keep eating, and if you didn't eat for a certain length of time, you started to get dizzy. You started to go into hypos, and then you had to take these wee lozenger sh- sugar sweets. They bring you back up again. They make you feel sort of half normal again. So it was like a case of, um, take the medications. You take the medications, your blood sugar goes down. Eat carbs, your blood sugar goes up. Take the medications, your blood sugar. So you're loving in that that seesaw thing, you know, and, and, and uh, that's a horrible way to be loving. You know, the fear I might not be able to eat. And today, I could go three days without eating and it wouldn't cost me. <laughs> you know, and some people would say to me, are you not worried about your blood sugars getting too low? No, no worries whatsoever. I see the blood sugars going down to 3.8 and it did not come, there was no... I didn't get dizzy. There was no shakes anymore. There was none of the stuff that I had during the years that I was taking the medications on the diabetes. Um, all in all, my life, it's not only I've just got my health back, I've got my life back. I'm back again and I'll play the guitar again and so on. And um, I've got energy. I love this way of eating that I'm actually on there. I hope I'm not run out of things to say here, like, because I am only on it 15 months. But it's been a great 15 months, so it has. And uh, all the podcasts, I listen to them all, so I do, I do as much research as I can on it. Um, there was that wee bit of subconscious fear in the back of my head. Will I be able to live all right and just meet without anything else without vegetables or without anything else. And then I reminded myself that nearly seven years ago when I done the other diet and the keto diet, I remember sitting down eating a keto meal and then thinking to myself afterwards, will I be able to live on this? Well, I lived five years on it. I didn't starve, you know. Uh, doing one meal a day, probably I've done one meal a day for about the best part of five years. So we'll have you know. And I still do it, but now again, two meals a day. And I can live very good as you on that. Fabulous. That, I mean, that's fabulous. And uh, it does make me very proud of you. It also frustrates me as a diabetes uh, specialist practitioner. I, I hear this all the time where people have followed the guidelines. They've had years of feeling hungry, being dizzy, taking the taking the advice and getting absolutely nowhere and getting worse and such a simple intervention like keto and then even better with carnivore your story is is unique but it's really common i hear it all the time roddy and it's it it does make my blood boil a little bit that 
people like the Diabetes Association and, you know, it's terrible. The advice they're giving is terrible. And, they're, you know, so you uh, touched on a nerve there. My stepfather, who was my real dad's brother after my dad died very young, my mum uh, remarried, believe it or not. So I am Hamlet in one way. Uh, he got diabetic. He had a toe amputated. So, you know, that point has uh, retouched me as well because I've had it in the family. It's uh, If I knew then what I know now, of course, that wouldn't have happened. So fabulous. Now, I think there's a really interesting thing that you've probably not spotted, but I have because I'm listening intently. You talked about your fibromyalgia, your non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. You talked about your arthritis in your thumb. You talked about, obviously, your type 2 diabetes. And you have not mentioned how much weight you've lost. And I think that is brilliant, you see, because everyone talks about the weight. And yes, we've got a picture of you with your trousers that are twice as big as your waist now. Where the, you know, the health, you actually said you got your health back, you got your life back. Many people think this way of eating is a weight loss diet. And I always say weight loss is the side effect of being healthy. Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, um, whatever, I went on the keto diet five years ago. A lot of people back then, Ken Berry and uh, other people, and Eric Berg, uh, they, they say it, do not make weight loss your primary goal. So my primary goal was to get normal blood glucose levels without medications. Um, weight loss was a bonus. And I have to say I was 16 stone in weight. So I was, and within about eight months on the keto diet alone, I went from 16 stone right down to about 10 and a half stone within eight months. And that was without doing any exercise whatsoever, not a pick of exercise. I think that around the end of that year, I went to my doctor and my doctor was amazed by the weight loss. And he says, are you doing any exercise? And I says, no. I says, but I'm thinking of going back to the pool. I says, I'd love to, you know, swim. And he says, that's good. And so then, I, I, so then I went to the leisure center and I swam every day. Um, not the born of calories, certainly not, and not the born carbs or anything else, just for the simple reason that I could do it. It was a celebration of what I've now, what I'm now capable of being able to do, which I couldn't do before. You know, all during them years with all, all, all during them years were. Uh, where I suffered with a type two, it, it was a. I wasn't going anywhere. I was in the house most of the time. I wasn't going out. I had very low moods. Um, I had no energy. You know, I just existed from morning to night, and my three meals a day, and to be snacks in between. You know, got my snack in the morning about eleven o'clock in the morning after my breakfast. My snack was one banana and a cup of coffee. Weigh a teaspoonful of brown sugar because somebody told me that brown sugar is not as bad as white sugar, which was absolutely bonkers, was absolutely crazy, you know. And uh, I can't say that I loved coffee. I think I loved the sugar, you know, because whenever the sugar was removed from the coffee, it took me a while to get the taste for coffee again without, without putting on sweeteners and sugars, and, you know, and that sort of thing, but no, weight loss wasn't my primary goal, but that's a lovely bonus. It's a beautiful bonus, so what, as you know, uh, even after, it's seven years almost, I was still keeping this, I was still keeping that weight off, like, and without any effort, you know. I don't count carbs anymore. That's what I like about the carnivore diet. On the keto diet, I had to keep my carbs down to below 20 grams a day. But then I see the wee cartoon where a boy says, you don't have to count carbs if you don't eat them. And that appeared to me with the carnivore diet. There's no need to count anymore. You don't that's count. That's brilliant. Yeah, that's brilliant. I'm going to actually write that down. You don't need to count, count carbs if you're not eating them. Just for the American viewers, um, in the UK, we're talking stones and pounds. 16 stone, there's, there, there's 14 pounds in a stone. So that was 224 pounds you were at, and you've lost about 77 pounds uh, when, when you went from 16 stone to 10 and a half. And you're right about you know the fact that the weight loss, although we're not going to focus on it because there's too many other great things, but people are interested in it. Um, 
you know, you don't have to exercise and people get that phrase wrong. They think we're saying exercise is bad. No, we're not saying that at all. What we're saying is, is the weight comes off very easily once you go from high carb down to, to low carb. Sim it's, it's that simple and it comes off and it comes off quite easily. And you mentioned when you were eating all that food, you know, you, you, you still felt hungry and you still felt dizzy. And here you are eating less, all right, at the time, like an OMAD, is a big feast, a ribeye, six eggs, Redmond salt. It's got a great meal, really nutritious. Um, and then people think, well, you're going to be hungry later. And you're not, are you? You know, it's a big surprise to a lot of people. It's, uh, it's, 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 it's strange like that. Um, you're just not hungry. You're just, you're, you're not eating because you're not hungry. You're not starving yourself, that's for sure. There's absolutely no starvation. Um, there's no hunger. Uh, nowadays, whenever I do get hungry, it's it's a more natural, normal kind of hunger. And while a meal's being prepared, <clears throat> I'm not walking up and down the floor anymore like a caged lion. You know, if something happened and I wasn't able to eat that meal, if somebody came to the door and I wasn't able to eat that meal, it's no big deal. I can wait. I can wait. There's a no big there's no big urgency the way there was when I suffered with the diabetes and I was living on a standard Western diet. You know, oh, I had to eat, I had to eat, like, you know, I have to eat. If I don't eat, I'll get hypos. And, uh, you know, it was all that craziness all the time, like, I've eaten and eaten. Mm. But strange, it's right? Not anymore. It's a great experience. I, I, I'm nodding away because... I've been there. Uh, absolutely. I would be, uh, my wife will attest to this. When I was high carb, before dinner, I'd have a sandwich. You know, it's 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 cra a crazy way to live. And this is so much simpler. By the way, I just want to name check Dr. Sarah Halberg, the TED talk you mentioned. Really ironic. I haven't watched that for many years. And I watched it yesterday. I didn't know you would bring her up. Um, that's a really good talk. And I'll put a link in the description to that if you want to see a fantastic passionate talk about um, reversing type 2 diabetes. You also, I mean, you reversed non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, which, are, you know, you're eating meat. Allegedly, you can't improve your liver and uh, your diabetes eating meat, but you you did everything. You, you got rid of arthritis, you got your triglycerides down, you can now play the guitar. It's, it's just a brilliant story, Roddy, isn't it? And do you find people around you friends and family support you or still think it's crazy? A lot of my family think it's crazy. Like they're all charm addicted, every one of them. But yeah, back to the fatty liver disease. It was 2015. The doctor said to me, sorry, Ronnie, I have the bad news for you. He says, you've got non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. <clears throat> no, sorry. <clears throat> he said, you've got fatty liver disease, first of all. And then he says to me, have you been drinking? Now, at that stage, Stephen, I hadn't had an alcoholic drink for about 20 years. As we talk at the moment, I'm 32 years since I've had my last alcoholic drink. I'm a recovered alcoholic. I don't mind having to say that. Um, so I thought to myself, was it maybe I've got the fatty liver disease because of the drinking I'd done 20 years ago? And I, I sent that to the doctor. He says, well, he says, that's a possibility which goes to show you how much he knew, you know. And he says, I've got some other news for you. And I says, what is that? He says, up at the hospital, he says, there's an 18-month waiting list to see a consultant. So there was I, left in 2015 with fatty liver disease, no chance of seeing a consultant for 18 months. Now, the year after that, in 2016, sadly, my father died from Alzheimer's. I had watched him cross over from type 2 diabetes over to what's now commonly known as type 3 diabetes. The last six years of his life was spent in a nursing home and he didn't know any of us. And he died. And after he died, you know, I watched what happened to him. He didn't know about keto, he didn't know about carver, he didn't know about any of them things. He didn't know it was the carbs. Like my mother said to me one day, she says, type two diabetic now. She says, but he still loves his bread and his jam and his Kit Kat and his Kit Kat bars. 
And I didn't take a flinch out of me because at that time and way back then, I knew nothing about type 2 diabetes and I knew nothing about Alzheimer's, but I know now that probably what happened to my father as he crossed over because he kept on eating the sugar, the carbohydrates, the bread, the jam, the potatoes, that all them sort of things and chocolate. His diabetes got worse and worse and worse regardless of the medications that he was on for type 2 diabetes and that would kill him. So it was a good incentive for me in 2017 when I found, the, the, when I found that I could reverse. Why would you not want to reverse a diabetes? You know, when there's a possibility that you could go on to get type 3 diabetes, which otherwise known as Alzheimer's. You're, you're dead. You, you can be sure I was very glad to go to reverse my diabetes. I didn't want to go the way he went, you know. Um, but fatty liver, there's no cure for fatty liver disease. There is no cure for it. The end result is liver failure. Or, as some somebody says, you'd end up waiting for somebody to die to get a transplant. And I didn't want to look that way. So to be told four months into the keto diet, that my fatty liver disease had, had, had gone. Now, at this time, my doctor, I says to my doctor, how do you know that? And he says, I can tell by your enzymes on your, on your, on your results. But I wasn't happy with that. I wanted to go back and get another scan to make sure it was already gone. And I asked him to send me for the scan. He says, okay, I'll send you for the scan. Went back for the scan and they were doing the scan on me. And the gear, the, the nurse that was doing the scan wasn't saying anything. <clears throat> and I says to her, how's my fatty liver? And she looked around at me and she says, what fatty liver? She says, Mr. Breslin, you don't have fatty liver. I says, thank you. And then I thought about something else. I says, how's my enlarged prostate? She says, I can't see it. She says, if it was enlarged, I would see it. She says, and I'm not seeing it. That is another thing I forgot to mention. No more enlarged prostate, gone. You wow. Know. Yeah. And you and you summed up the ridiculous mainstream medical view is there's no cure for fatty liver. And yet oh. they see it when people eat this way. It yeah. reverses. Yeah. And I'm, I'm always... I always have to say this because 99% of comments are really good. I always get 1% of comments and, and they're, they're ignorant, I've got to be honest, and I never used to be that blunt with people. But, yeah, is it cured? Yes. But they often say, well, not if you went back to the way he was eating, it would come straight back. Yeah. Well, that's a ridiculous statement. Yes, it's cured. We can say cured. Right. Well, Stephen, as I said, I'm a recovered alcoholic. I will never die. I will never die from alcoholism as long as I don't go back to drinking alcohol. And it's the same thing for me as a diabetic. I'll never die from diabetes if I don't go back to the cause of it, which is carbohydrates, starches, sugars, vegetable oils, seed oils. If I don't go back to eating any of that stuff, I'm not going to die from diabetes. It's as simple Absolutely. as that. I just. Yeah. I treat it the same way as alcoholism. Personally, I do. I don't mind if, if other people don't agree with that or don't, that's okay. But for me, I, 32 years ago, I had to accept that I could no longer drink alcohol safely. I had to fully accept that in order to recover from alcoholism. And I've done that. So now I treat it the same way with the type 2 diabetes. I had to fully accept that I can't for the rest of my life one day at a time, eat carbohydrates again. I just can't do it. I can't handle them. Same as the alcohol, I can't handle it. So I added into that, their perspective, and it has worked for me. So, and it's, I, I just take it the same way, one day at a time. You know, I don't have to eat carbs today. I don't have to drink alcohol today, and I'm happy. You know, what's going to happen tomorrow or next year? I'm not worried about it, you know. I'm yes. Not, Yes. Now, um, we we went over your family a little bit, but you want to get back to the non-alcoholic fatty liver, and I, I absolutely agree with that. But I do want to ask a bit more about your family, because it sounds like your wife was very supportive. Was she supportive when you went from keto to carnivore, and 
And you also said some of the people think you're crazy. Did, even though they've seen all these yeah. brilliant things happen to you, they're, they're still very, no, they're very, very pleased with that. So they're they are very, very pleased with that. Um, in the back of my wife, um, whenever I went keto, she went keto with me. You know, she wasn't asking me to do something that she wasn't wanting to do herself. She went keto as well. And when I went care of her, guess what? The good lady went care of her as well. Now, she's had her own medical issues over the years. Um, IBS. IBS is completely gone. But here's another thing about keto. When I was on keto, I always felt bloated enough to eat the vegetables and that. Since I went to care of her, there's no bloating. And I must say that nowadays, if I do fart, it's an event. It doesn't happen that often anymore. You know, I go to the toilet about once every three days. That's it, and it's good. So it is. Um, my wife, without my wife, I don't think I'd be sitting here today having this conversation because during the years of the diabetes, it was actually her that did the research. She went looking for a way out. She seen what was happening with the health service, the way they were not helping me here. And she, she thought that there must be some other way because he's taking the medications, he's eating the way they told him to eat, and he's getting worse. So she started to look for answers. It was her, that was my wife, who found the answers, you know. And she still supports me to this day as regards the rest of my family. Let's take one example. I lost a brother last year to uh, leukemia. My he was next in years to me in 67. Uh, I was 66 last year. He was 65. And uh, when I went down to the hospital and he was on the deathbed and my brothers and sisters were all sitting around the deathbed, one of my sisters looked up and she says, God, probably who would have known that you were the one that was going to become the healthiest? Out of all the family, you were going to become the healthiest? She wow. Says, at a time, she says, we thought it would be you that would be dead first and not Kieran, you know, and God rest Kieran, like, but um, it, they can accept that, but none of them really believes it, you know, no, no, none of them believes that you can live the rest of your life without eating carbohydrates, that you need your carbs, that you can't just live and meat only and things like that, 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 that they probably think is crazy. So that, you know, but they're not coming and saying anything to me. You know, they're not saying you shouldn't do it either, Nick, you know. I think they're happy for me. You know, that I've got over the diabetes and that sort of thing and I've seen the weight loss that I've had. And... Yeah. So it's, 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 yes. It, you are a brilliant example of this way of eating. And I, I love your attitude and it's great. You've got a supportive wife. So we're, we're, we're kindred spirits in that way because my wife looks after me left, right and centre and is always pointing out who I should interview and uh, things she's seen on the internet. So um, it's great to have, you know, behind every great man, there's a fantastic woman. That, that's a great phrase, isn't it? Right now, Roddy, that is it for today. I think that's a fabulous interview. I really enjoyed it. Can't believe the amount of things that you've reversed and improved. Um, I really have enjoyed your story and I hope we can keep in touch and maybe in a year's time do an update. Oh, thank you for having me.